Hi, this is Ryan Neal from the USA offices of Neal Savary and Harness Cowboy Sewing Machines and High Tech Sewing Machines. And we're ready to progress with the second video in our series. And what we're going to be discussing in this video is uh, the thread tension adjustments on this machine, both the top and the bobbin thread tension adjustments. We're also going to walk you through how to wind a bobbin on the sewing machine. And we're also going to talk about the forward and reverse stitch and also the stitch length adjustments on the sewing machine. So for the first part of this video, I'm going, to, I'm going to discuss a little bit about thread tension adjustments on these machines and what it is that you need to look for and what you would actually need to adjust on the sewing machine when you are adjusting the thread tension. So there are two separate thread tensions on the top side of the sewing machine. One is the primary tension. The reason why they call this the primary tension is because this is where the most of your adjustments are going to occur on the sewing machine. The second tension adjustment that we have is the secondary tension or the pre-tension on the sewing machine. The reason why we have the secondary tension on the sewing machine is that it's designed as a pre-tension to pre-tension the thread when it comes down into the primary um, and again this is where most of your thread tension adjustments are. Um, when you adjust the primary tension on this sewing machine um, to tighten the primary tension you're going to turn this knob counterclockwise um, or I'm sorry clockwise you will turn the knob clockwise to uh, increase the uh, tension and then you'll turn the knob counterclockwise to decrease the tension and the same thing up here when you tighten the knob you'll tighten the knob clockwise to increase the tension counterclockwise to decrease the tension um, generally when you make thread tension adjustments on this sewing machine um, whatever you turn the primary thread tension you'll turn it by for instance if you turn it one revolution you'll turn the secondary tension half as much so that would be again half of a revolution so if we tighten the primary tension one full revolution then we will tighten the secondary tension a half of a revolution if we tighten the primary tension two full revolutions we'll, we'll tighten the secondary tension a half of I'm sorry one full revolution and so um, just as a uh, to show you guys a, a, an example of what an improper stitch looks like you can see that in a situation here we've got loops big loops on the underside of the material right here and this is attributed to the fact that the top thread tension on the sewing machine is not tight enough and so what we have to do to correct that if the top thread tension on the sewing machine is not tight enough you would tighten the top thread tension by approximately oh usually in in quarter turn to half turn increments is usually a best bet if you're sewing with a a very heavy leather you can turn it maybe in three quarter to one turn increments um, and whatever you turn the primary tension you also turn the secondary tension a half of whatever that half of whatever that distance was so you can see from the sample we had large loops on the underside of the material that's indicative of a situation where the top thread tension is not tight enough so how we would correct for that is by tightening this knob um, a half to you know one turn and then we would tighten this knob again half as much so that would be a quarter to a uh, I'm sorry, a quarter to an eighth, or an eighth to a quarter of a turn. So um, that would be how you would adjust that situation if you had loops on the bottom side. Now, if you had loops on the top side of the material, then what we would have to do is we would have to loosen the top thread tension. So that when you have loops on the top side of the material, that basically means that um, the top side of the machine is winning the tug of war between the top of the machine and the, and the bobbin area in the sewing machine so that if you have loops on the top side of the material you're definitely going to need to loosen the top thread tension again loosen the primary say one turn you know or you know a half of a turn and then again you would loosen the secondary in accordance with that again half as much so um, that would give you a rough idea about how to adjust the thread tensions on this sewing machine for different sewing situations. And remember, there's not going to be one um, all-inclusive guide that's going to show you how to do that. A lot of it is, is experimentation, you know, when you're, when you're depending upon the type of leather that you're sewing, the size of thread that you're using, and so forth. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to adjust the bobbin tension on the sewing machine. <clears throat> Very rarely do you need to adjust the bobbin tension on this machine. Um, most of the time the bobbin tension is set from the factory. Um, the only time you would need to adjust the bobbin tension on this sewing machine is if you're making a dramatic change in thread sizes. 
So for instance, if we're, right now we're running a size 277 thread in the bobbin on this sewing machine, if we went to a size 138 thread, which would be two sizes smaller than what we have for the 277, then you would need to adjust the bobbin tension. If we, for instance, we went up two thread sizes from a 277 all the way up to a 415, that would be two sizes larger than the current thread that we're running in the sewing machine. And in that particular case, you would also need to adjust the bobbin tension. A general way of thinking about this would be that when you add a smaller size of thread to the bobbin case, you're going to need to tighten up up the bobbin tension. If you add a larger size of thread, you're going to need to loosen the bobbin tension. And how you how you make that particular adjustment on the sewing machine is that you'll see that there's a it, there's a small hole right here, and this is a set screw that is used to do nothing but hold this particular screw, which is the actual adjuster screw, in place on the sewing machine. So the first thing that you want to do is loosen the set screw, and you'll just turn it counterclockwise. You do not need to remove the set screw, just loosen it. And then the second thing you'll do is come back over here, and you'll either tighten or loosen this screw to increase or decrease bobbin tension. Tightening the screw will increase the bobbin tension. Loosening the screw will decrease the bobbin tension. So that if, for instance, we were running a size 415 thread, which is much larger than the thread that's in this machine right now, we would need to decrease the bobbin tension by loosening it. If we were running a size 138 thread, we would need to increase the bobbin tension by tightening this screw. And the reason why, and it does make sense if you think about it, is you have a small plate right here, and this plate is resting against the side of the bobbin case. By having a bigger thread, we would need to push this plate farther away from the bobbin case housing. If we're running a smaller thread, we would need to put the we would need to push the thread a little bit tighter against the bobbin thread housing to maintain the same degree of tension. But again, rarely if ever do you need to adjust the bobbin tension on this machine. The best thing to do is to leave the bobbin tension alone and perform most of your adjustments from the top side of the sewing machine using the primary tension and the secondary tension on this unit. So that gives you a rough idea um, how to adjust the bobbin tension on the sewing machine as well as how to adjust the top thread tensions on the sewing machine. And now we're going to talk about how to adjust the stitch length on the sewing machine. If you look at the sewing machine, you'll see that there is a, uh, on the plate here, you'll see that there is an R for reverse and an F for forward. By slamming the reverse, by slamming this lever all the way up, you'll see that that forces it into reverse. And then by pushing the lever all the way down, you'll see that that forces it into forward. There's also stitch length, uh, there is a stitch length adjustment feature on this machine. And you'll see that there are numbers that are on this plate, starting from a number zero, going all the way down to a number 11. And how you, these numbers are arbitrary, they don't mean anything, they're not stitches per inch, they're not, uh, you know, millimeters per stitch or anything like that. They're simply reference numbers that are used to show you a change in the, in the stitch length. So that if we wanted to, for instance, have a larger stitch length, if we wanted the, the, the paddle to go farther down, what we would do is we would loosen this uh, plunger adjuster right here. And you can see that what that does is that allows me to push this lever all the way down as far uh, or farther than what it was previously. And you'll see that as we do that, this plunger references farther down on this number scale. So it, for instance, went from a number six all the way down to a number 10 when we did that particular adjustment. So now we know we, that we have a bigger stitch. If we want to have a smaller stitch, then what we have to do is we have to turn this um, in a clockwise fashion. And so that, that pushes the plunger farther inward. And so we can see now that the plunger will not go all the way down or will not go down as far as it did previously. And so um, you can see now that we, this would give us a smaller stitch. So, uh, and it also works that way in reverse. You can see that now that since I've got a smaller stitch, the plunger does not go all the way up as much in um, the reverse stitch. And it, it does that concurrently with uh, what it does with the position that it was in in the forward stitch as well. So that gives you a rough idea on how to adjust thread tensions. Just remember to loosen this if you want to have a bigger stitch, and remember to tighten it if you want to have a if you want to have a smaller stitch. And so you can see that the plunger position changes, and so that's that's what regulates the stitch length. So that's a, a quick adjust or a quick uh, tutorial on how to adjust the stitch length on this machine. And now what we're going to do is talk a little bit about how to uh, thread the bobbin winder mechanism on the machine and also how to wind a bobbin. And so what we'll do is I'll come over here to the, um, 
to the first station that we actually wind for the bobbin winder mechanism. And you'll see that there's two tabs right here with holes in them. What we'll do is we'll thread the tab on the right hand side here from right to left. We'll bring it around the discs and we'll snap it between the two tension discs. Again, you don't wrap this around the discs a full revolution. You only bring it three quarters of the way around. And then after that, we'll um, thread the front um, arm assembly here and we'll thread that from back to front. So now you can see that the thread's coming in from this side, coming around the discs and coming back out through the arms, arm assembly on this side. From there, we're going to go over here to the thread guide on the sewing machine. You'll see that there's a large hole uh, in the center of this uh, thread guide, and so what you'll do is you'll, you'll put the thread down from top to bottom through this hole. And then the next step is to grab a bobbin, and you'll see that on the bobbin itself there is a series of uh, small holes, one small hole right here and another small hole right here on both sides of the bobbin. And it doesn't matter which hole you use, but what you'll do is you'll just simply insert the thread uh, from the inside of the bobbin to the outside of the bobbin through that hole. And then coming down to the bobbin winder mechanism itself, you'll see that on the bobbin winder mechanism itself, there's a very small nipple that sticks out at the base of the bobbin winder. If you can see where my finger is right here, I'll use a screwdriver as a pointer so that you can see it just a little bit better. That small nipple that's at the base of the bobbin winder is uh, what you actually stick the uh, this small hole um, onto. And so what that enables you to do is it actually pinches the thread into uh, the hole and so that holds the thread in a stationary position not allowing it to move. So then when to initiate the bobbin winding sequence on this sewing machine basically all you have to do is take this paddle mechanism right here and you'll push the paddle mechanism down as soon as I get the bobbin pushed all the way on the shaft and then what we'll do is uh, you push the paddle mechanism down and then what that does is that that engages the bobbin winder moves it forward to start the bobbin winding process then all you have to do is just go ahead and click on the gas and then you'll see that the bobbin winder starts to starts to wind and it winds in a in a um, left to right motion across so it'll come over here to the right hand side then it'll start its way back over to the left you can actually watch the thread do that now there are adjustments that are on the bobbin winder if you feel that the thread is winding too loosely you can make an adjustment on this tension up here if you feel the bobbin is winding too tightly you can simply loosen these tension discs and it makes it a little easier for the th for the thread to come down through the thread path on the bobbin winder but as you can see, the bobbin winder will, will con or the bobbin will continue to fill, and then as the bobbin fills, you'll see that this paddle right here will start to raise higher and higher and higher and higher. And then as it does, eventually it'll reach a point once the bobbin is filled, eventually it'll reach a point to where the bobbin winder mechanism itself just kicks off. And I'm gonna simulate this in the video because obviously you don't want to see me winding a bobbin for the next you know 20 minutes. So anyhow, I'll simulate this in the video that will simulate the kickoff point for the bobbin winder. And so how that works is it's going to be like this, that when the bobbin winder fills up all the way, you'll, or when the bobbin itself fills up all the way, you'll see that this, uh, this paddle will, click, will, will kick up in the up position. Usually what you want to do when you're winding a bobbin is you want the bobbin to fill to within about a sixteenth to a thirty-second of an inch from the outer rim of the bobbin. Right now this bobbin's about halfway full, so but you want it to fill to within a sixteenth to a thirty-second of an inch of the outer rim of the bobbin. And that kickoff point on the bobbin winder is actually adjustable. And you'll see here that there is a, um, a small black metal plate on top of the chrome paddle. And in order to adjust the bobbin winder, there's a small nut that's under here. I'll see if the camera can catch this in the video. There's a small nut that's right underneath here. What you would have to do is loosen that nut, and then you would either tighten or loosen the screw that's right here. And so that allows you to push this plate down or bring this plate up, thereby adjusting the kickoff point for the bobbin winder mechanism itself. Um, there is a small thread cutter right here, which is uh, could be utilized to cut your thread after you're done winding a bobbin. I usually just take a pair of thread snips or scissors and go ahead and just cut it off myself after the thread's wound, but you can use that small thread cutter right there to cut the bobbin thread. So this would give you a rough idea um, as far as you know making thread tension adjustments on the sewing machine as well as adjusting the 
the uh, stitch length on the sewing machine and the forward and reverse, as well as threading and utilizing the bobbin winder on the Cowboy CB4500. And uh, my name is Ryan Neal from the USA offices of Cowboy Sewing Machines. If you have any questions on this sewing machine or you'd be interested in purchasing one, please contact us at area code 330-692-1418. And I do thank you for your time today.